Welcome back to another episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. I'm very happy to have you here in my beautiful Montana home in the Bitterroot Valley. I've got a few friends coming over later, so I wanna make some appetizers for them. So I'm gonna actually going to do Axis ground venison. So this is Axis deer from Broken Arrow Ranch. And we're gonna mix that all up with kind of some unique things. And so I want you to stick around and watch kind of the way that I do a little spin on my meatballs. And then I'm gonna pair that with kind of an Asian orange sauce. So stick around while I bring the forest to your table. So what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to do the Axis venison, ground venison. But you know, a lot of times what you're making for meatballs is kind of that binding agent. So they'll make a panade with milk and breadcrumbs. I'm going to do a little nod different, and that's with burgundy. So I'm actually making red wine as my panade. So I'm just gonna kind of mix those things together and then let that sit to the side while I put all of the other ingredients in with my ground venison. I just like this acidic level. So the milk is very creamy and decadent and wonderful. However, I'm using Parmesan cheese as well. So I've got enough of that decadence. Now I need to balance that with a little bit more acidic note. So I'm going to take some of my Montana flavor to savor seasonings. And if you've watched my other episodes, I don't really measure my seasonings. I look at the surface of what I'm covering. And then I'm going to get this other bag going in here. This Broken Arrow Ranch does such a great job. I mean, they are dedicated to quality throughout. So if you are not a hunting family and you need to source your game online, BrokenArrowRanch.com is one of the best places I have found and I've been cooking game for over 30 years. So I'm very versed in the actual uh, quality of game meat and Broken Arrow Ranch is one of the best. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually put on some gloves because they'll be a little bit easier. Should have did that already, but that's okay. You know, just because we're on camera doesn't mean we can't mess up and start over. <laughs> so I'll put my gloves on, just make it easier. And then I'm going to actually season this side too. And what I'm going to maybe put this aside so I can get a little bit lower so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now we're gonna add kind of our aromatics along with our binding. I have done red onion and I've actually put this in the food processor because for one, it's really easy. But for two, a lot of times people say, oh no, you're ruining it. But you're actually bringing out more moisture and meatballs with the, the breadcrumbs and so forth. Adding a little bit more moisture is not a bad thing. And you're releasing the flavors and the aromatics in a more direct way when you do it this way. So I'm also did some minced garlic and some whole grain Dijon. And then I have some chipotle and adobo. So I take like that, that can of chipotle and adobo and I buzz up with the food processor. I buzz up that entire can with the sauce and everything. Then I can actually put it into like a freezer bag or whatnot and press it all down, take all the air out. And then I can just break off a tablespoon here and a tablespoon there, but I'll put it in the freezer after that and only use what I need to use when I want. So I'm just gonna kind of mix that seasoning around with all of that chipotle. And then we're going to get our egg binder in there. And meatballs is another one of those things that you really can overwork it. So it's not one of the things that you wanna overdo, but you also wanna be able to season every single meatball. So <laughs> we wanna make sure we do that. I'm gonna add some Worcestershire and also some uh, chopped parsley. So again, we have a rich decadent uh, meat item. The parsley actually helps us add that herbaceous note that kind of cuts through all of that richness. So we're gonna mix all of that together and then I'm gonna get the egg and I'm actually gonna get in there with my hands and get messy here. I'm also gonna add in 
some Parmesan cheese. We're adding again that decadence. And then we're gonna do our egg. And after I get all of that going, I'm gonna add my breadcrumbs as I think I need. So you don't wanna add all of it all at once. Kinda of gotta play off of the feel on, my, on meatballs. How much moisture is in there? How much do you need to dry out and create a binder with the breadcrumbs and whatnot? So it just needs to stay together enough. And as you can see, I just kinda of grab and then push down with my fingers. I'm not getting in there and just really working the meat so I keep it tender. We want it to stay together, but we don't want it to be tough. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go in with a portion of our moistened breadcrumbs. That looks about right, because I can just tell from the feel of it and the look of it, it's going to be really good. And that burgundy just actually plays off of that richness of the egg and the Parmesan and all of those seasonings and that Axis venison from Broken Arrow Ranch. Very, it's one of the top venisons actually and the most sought after as far as flavor goes. So if you get a chance to try Axis ven venison from Broken Arrow Ranch, you won't be disappointed. So perfect. Now, what I'm actually going to do is start to form these up. I think I have plenty of binder. So you can kind of see that they're still kind of moist, but uh, that bread will still kind of absorb some more too and expand as we go. So um, I can form a meatball, that's what I'm looking for. And as long as it's gonna hold its shape, you're gonna be good. Okay, so I'm gonna form these up and put them on a sheet pan and then we're gonna put them into a 350 degree oven for about 10, 15 minutes. I'll rotate them halfway through and then when they're all done, I'll toss them in that beautiful uh, Asian orange chili sauce. So keep watching and we'll get all of these meatballs done. Wonderful, I can smell those meatballs. I can't wait to get them out of the oven. Here we go. Yes. They've held together so nice. I flipped them halfway through. So now what I'm gonna do is take them off of here and put them in here so I can dress them with some of that beautiful Asian sauce that I made. I'm gonna be kind of careful in how I take those off. And then after I toss them in the sauce, I'll put them on a plate that is guest worthy. <laughs> Cause I wanna have my friends enjoy my meatballs here from the Axis Venison from Broken Arrow Ranch. I'm so excited. I know they're gonna be delicious. I have made these meatballs so many times over the years. It's one of our number one requested as a caterer at the restaurant. It was one of our number one requested appetizer. So awesome, awesome meal here. Now I'm gonna take my Asian orange sauce. And it's just like an Asian chili and orange molasses and brown sugar and a um, little bit of ketchup. A little apple cider vinegar in there. And I just wanna kinda toss that and coat all of those meatballs in this beautiful, delicious sauce. I'm gonna move that out of the way. I'm just gonna kinda turn them around in there so they all get kinda tossed with that sauce. And then we'll also drizzle some over the top. But I really wanna have it soak up right now. As it's cooling down, as the meat is cooling down, it'll absorb more things on the flavor side. So kind of releases its, relaxes its 
the protein relaxes a little bit and it'll take on some more flavor. So perfect. Now let's get it on our beautiful glass plate. Love it. This sauce, I have people that just want this sauce. And that's actually with my spice line, the next thing we're going to start doing is sauces. So follow the spice line on social media at Montana Flavor to Savor. You can go to the webpage and, and get the spices now and get started with all of these beautiful flavor combinations that I've shown you in this season and last season as well. I'm leaving one back for me. <laughs> because I wanna try that. Now what I wanna do here is I'm going to top dress with just a little bit of that Parmesan Reggiano that I used inside the meatball. And then also we're gonna do some toasted sesame seeds. So I wanna really make sure I get each one because it looks pretty as well as it adds that kind of toasty texture element. And then we're gonna top dress with some thin sliced scallions. So, and then on top of that, I wanna also add a nod to that sauce with some fresh orange zest. So I got my beautiful little zester here, and you just wanna get the orange, you don't wanna get into the pith. But it also looks gorgeous on the plate, but we're getting that fresh pop of zest that will really enliven your palate and pair well with that sauce because we have orange, in the sauce as well. Perfect, there we go. I think that looks great. And before we go, I'm gonna taste this. <laughs> I'm gonna cut into that. Beautiful, uh, drizzle it in the sauce. I might have to have just a couple of sesame seeds and maybe a scallion on there. I'm gonna get kind of messy. Pardon me while I enjoy this. Mm. finger looking good. Mm. Yes, I'm so excited for my guests to try this. So I'm Chef Shelly Meyer. This has been Shelly's Game Kitchen. Catch me on social media at Chef Shelly Meyer or Montana Flavor to Savor. It's been my pleasure to be here today while I brought the forest to your table. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen. I brought to you today Axis venison and I made that into meatballs and paired it with a beautiful orange zesty chili sauce. So I'm waiting for my friends to show up and I'm gonna serve that recipe to them. I'm Chef Shelly Meyer and you've been watching Shelly's Game Kitchen. I've been enjoying meats and showing uh, wild and pure game meat for you from Broken Arrow Ranch. I've, I've done so many different recipes with meat from them and they are your true source for wild game. If you're not a hunter and you want to find a really quality uh, game meat provider, they're your best source. Go to BrokenArrowRanch.com. So we have been enjoying the beautiful views of Montana in my home in the Bitterroot Valley. I got to show you this whole season two of Shelly's Game Kitchen in my kitchen, in my home. And then also I've been able to show you different areas of the Bitterroot Valley. Some of my favorite places to go and, and really see the vistas and the beautiful views and landscape that we have here. So thank you so much for watching Shelly's Game Kitchen and I'll catch you on the next season. This episode of Shelly's Game Kitchen was sponsored by Broken Arrow Ranch. Go to BrokenArrowRanch.com.